Well, hi guys, it's that time. It's our Bible teaching snippet of the day. Well, today what I want to do is ask you a few questions. You know, I like to ask questions. It's very healthy for us to do that. It gets us to thinking about what we're thinking about and thinking about what we think we believe, right? So uh, people say that they believe their Bibles and what their Bibles say about Jesus. So my question is, let's find out today, do we really believe what Scripture says or maybe we have been taught not to fully believe what Scripture says. So I'm just going to do a few Scriptures, and I'm going to, I just as I read these, I want you to think about this, okay? In Luke chapter 2, verse 10, the angel says that Jesus will be good news to all people. Did you know, I think what I was taught is that Jesus is good news to the people that hear the message that they're sinners, and if they say a sinner's prayer, they won't go to hell for all eternity, but instead they will get to go to heaven. But they have to first hear the message, okay, and then they have to believe the message and respond to the message. And then from there, we've got different beliefs as to whether they're uh, once saved, always saved, is sometimes what they call it, uh, where once you get saved and say the sinner's prayer, nothing changes that. Or the second idea behind that is you have you have to continue to do something to maintain your salvation. So let's think about that. Here's uh, John 3.35 as well as John 12.47. Scripture says that Jesus is the Savior of the world, okay? And here in 1 John 4.14, it says that the Father has sent the Son to be the Savior of the world, I'm going to read you one more also. 1 John 2, 2. It says, Jesus is the atoning sacrifice for our sins. And not only for our sins, he's talking about believers, not only the sins of uh, people who have already come into believing on Jesus, okay, but also for the sins of the whole world, okay. Do you get that? I've just read you one, two, three, four different places where it says that Jesus is the Savior of the whole world. Do we really believe that Jesus is actually the Savior of the whole world? Or have we been taught to believe that Jesus can be the Savior of part of the world, and that part of the world will be the people who, like I said, talking about Luke chapter 2, verse 10, uh, is Jesus allowed to be the Savior of part of the world? Some people, those who actually hear the message, respond to the message, right? Well, they hear it, believe it, and respond to it and maintain it. I'm just asking good questions here. Now, here's my next one I want to ask you. Here's 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 19. And it was God himself presently in Jesus, personally present in Christ, reconciling and restoring the world. There's that word, the world. Not part of the world, not some of the world. Some people... No, the world to favor with himself. Now watch. Reconciling and restoring the world to favor with himself, not counting up and holding against men their trespasses, but canceling them out and committing us to the message of reconciliation. And he talks about us being ministers of reconciliation in that same chapter. Okay, here's my question. Do we really believe that God the Father has reconciled the world back to himself, and the word reconciliation means to make peace through Christ? Has he restored and reconciled the whole world back to himself through Christ? And has he set aside counting up and hogging against people, all men, their sins, and canceling them out through the works of Jesus? And then he tells us as believers for us to go and tell the message to the whole world that they have been saved by Jesus, they have been reconciled by Jesus back to the Father, okay? And now, let me give you the good news. You can step into this and enjoy it now. Do we really believe that? Do we believe that that's really already a past tense, already been done, and now what we do is go out and give the good news to all people? That Jesus is good news to all people. Okay, I'm going to go a little deeper. 1 Corinthians 15, 22. 
For just as in Adam all die. Did you know I've never had anybody argue that verse? Ever. Ever. We believe that and we live by it and we don't ever question it. In fact, we preach that. Okay. Because of what Adam did, that one act of one man, every human being was drawn into sin and drawn into death because the wages or the results of sin is physical death. Okay. So we don't even question that. Here's the part that I'm going to ask you if you really believe. So also in Christ, as in Adam, all die, but also in Christ, all, that same all, all people die, but in Christ, all people will be given life. Do we really believe that Jesus is that powerful, that God the Father had a perfect plan, he worked the plan, he didn't fail at the plan, he and Jesus were 100% successful either in this life or in the afterlife, but at some point, all will be given life. Through the acts of one man, all people were drawn into sin, and the consequences of that is death. But through the works of one man being righteous, his actions of being righteous, all are made righteous, okay, and they will have life. Do we really believe that? Because see, what I believe that I was taught is that Adam is stronger than Jesus and mightier than Jesus. Adam got me in a situation that I didn't get a vote on. I was drawn into sin through Adam and that I will die because of Adam. But nothing Jesus can do can change that unless I make the right decision to do it. And even for me to make the right decision to receive, okay, to hear the message, somebody's got to make the decision for me to hear the message so that I have the opportunity to believe the message, to respond to the message, to get myself out of a mess that I never put myself in to begin with. But now I have to do something. It's kind of like, for I didn't have to do anything to enact what Adam did. It, I just inherited it. It kind of got passed on to me, right? But at the same time, now Jesus isn't that great because I have to help Jesus conquer Adam and what Adam did. Let's think on that, guys, okay? See, I'm just confessing to you what I believed for the first 10 or 11 years of me being what some call a Christian. I call it being a follower of Christ. I came into the church. I believed a lot of the church teachings. But the last three years, I've been spending a lot of time with Jesus one-on-one. -on -one, and he's been showing me that he is the Savior of the whole world, all people, okay, all people. And if he wasn't able to do that, it would have been more just for God to have gone on and destroyed Adam and Eve in the very beginning, and it would have been two people who perished, okay, because of what two people did. But he saw a, a way to get victory through Jesus to offset all of that and save every single human being for all time, the all men, the whole world, including Adam and Eve. All right, let me keep going now. I've already brought this up, but this is Romans 5.18. As one sin of Adam brought punishment of death to all people, so too one good act that Jesus did makes all people right with God, bringing them to true life. Okay, now I'm going to talk to you a little bit. I'm going to run through this pretty quick. First uh, Timothy 2, 4, and it says that God longs for everyone to embrace his life and to return to the full knowledge of truth. Okay, do we believe that God's will will actually in the end be done? See, God has a, a will in the beginning, and then he's working within mankind's will Okay, so people do have free choice, free will, or choices that they make. But will God ultimately, because I'm going to tell you, I can rip you out about five or six different scriptures that says God will get what he wants. He's working within our own will, and he will continue to work within our own will, just like I work within the will of my six-year-old grandson, okay? And he gets his free will and his choices, but ultimately, because I'm gammy, 
I also get ultimately what I want because I bring him about to wanting the same thing that I want. I'm going to propose to you, God's going to do that, either here or on the other side of the grave. So what I'm saying here, it says that this is what God wants. God longs for this. He longs for everyone to embrace his life and to return to a full knowledge of truth. I personally take God at his word, and he is going to get what he wants, and all people will embrace his life, and all people will come to a full knowledge of truth. Here's 2 Peter 3, 9. The Lord is not slow in doing what he promised. He promised. And the way people understand slowness. But God is patient with you. It doesn't say God is patient with you up until you deny him, do not accept him, reject him, and when you die, it's over. It doesn't say that. God is being patient with you. He does not want anyone to perish or to be lost, but he wants all A-L-L, -L, all people to change their hearts and lives, come to a repentance, change their ways, change the way that they think and what they believe, and return to him. I believe he's going to get what he wants because he's all-powerful. See, I'm not teaching something less. I'm saying that I believe that Jesus is greater than I ever believed in the first 11 years of Christianity. And I do believe that he will have what he wants. Okay, I'm going to read you one last uh, verse, and I want to ask you a question or two about this. 1 Timothy 4.10. It can't be any clearer than this. And we have to be taught not to read this and understand it. It's crystal clear. It's so easy to understand from where I'm sitting now because I've gotten free of a lot of religious lies that were never true. That you can't even substantiate going and telling people that they're sinners to, and they tell them a message about going to hell, and if they believe the message, receive the message, uh, act upon the message, say a sinner's prayer that they're not going to go to hell. That's not even in our Bibles. You, but you got to know and get to the point to look for that and go, that's not even in there. Okay, but here's what is in your Bible, okay? This is Scripture, 1 Timothy 4.10. Jesus is the Savior of all mankind, all men especially to those of us who believe. So real quick, let me tell you what it means when it says, especially to those who believe. Did you know that when we find out that we've already been saved, past tense, everybody's saved, Jesus did that part. It has nothing to do with us. What we do is we become reconciled to God through the message that Jesus has done everything he needs to do for us to step into the life that God created us to be living in, okay? So we are ministers of reconciliation. Let me see if I can find this. I posted this earlier with a friend, and I'm not sure I saved it, but I'm going to slow down just one second and see if I can find my response to a friend of mine when I was talking about this. Um... I don't see it real handy, but I'll, I'll just finish this video up real quick. And maybe what I'll do is I'll post what I wrote in below the comments of this video, okay? So basically what I was telling, well, I've just found it, guys. Okay, uh, here's what it says. When I read this verse, this is what I understand it saying. Jesus is the Savior of all mankind, especially to those of us that believe. Especially, meaning more so than people that don't know it yet, okay? Especially meaning that for those of us who are currently already believing this unchangeable fact, we are living in the benefit of this truth right now. Its power has, is, and continues to vilify, enrich our lives, transforming us into the image of Christ. Romans 8, 29, 2 Corinthians three eighteen, Making us mature sons and daughters, we are attaining the whole measure of the fullness of Christ, Ephesians 4.13. Everyone, and I've said this, this is going to mess some people up, everyone is saved, delivered, and rescued, but not everyone has received the message. This message that they have been, past tense, reconciled to God through Christ, 2 Corinthians 5.19. This is why we are the ministers of reconciliation. We are to deliver this wonderful message of reconciliation so everyone can get started enjoying these benefits right here, 
right now in the nasty now and now. So, guys, listen, I just wanted to throw this. I want you to pray about it. I want you to read these scriptures. I want you to let Holy Spirit teach you all truth, lead you into all truth. I love you, and I'm going to sign off. I'll see you here tomorrow. Bye-bye.